Hello there. I'm glad you're here. I've got a double page scrapbook layout for you today. We're going to be documenting lots of photos. Uh, I have some fall themed photos of my mom and my husband and I harvesting pumpkins from our garden. So I've got some uh, four by six, four by four, and then a whole bunch of uh, three by fours all in portrait style here. Now I went ahead and picked out a sketch as my jumping off point. So this is from the creative design team 12 by 12 volume two sketchbook and I've covered up the measurements here I just didn't want to give that away so this is my jumping off point but I have more photos and different orientation photos so I'm going to show you the changes I am making but it was great to have this because I was looking at all these photos and I'm like oh my goodness I don't even know where to start I was a little bit overwhelmed so I picked out a sketch and that definitely uh, helped me get going on this. And I've already cut out my paper, so let me grab those. So for my base, I am going to use crumb cake cardstock. I wanna talk more about this too here in just a moment. So hang tight for that. But rather than starting on white, I thought it would be fun to use crumb cake for something different. And then I am using the Autumn Memories collection from Stampin' Up. And I did follow the sketch measurements for these two pieces here. And then also these two pieces. Oh, where's the other one? That's gonna sit there. Now actually this one is slightly smaller because it was already cut. It's a scrap. So I'm gonna roll with it because it was close enough, right? And then I have these pieces, which if you caught my first layout, you know I got these from that first layout. So I think they're about the same. Eh, one's slightly wider, but I thought these would be great to use. And you'll notice here that this piece of paper, so this wood grain is representing this one and this one here, but mine's bigger and I'm going to leave it that way because I feel like it works really well with my photos. So I'm gonna place these right where the sketch has them and I did follow along here. So four by six, four by four, and then we've got a three by four. Now this is where I switched it up. There's two horizontal six by fours and then a three by four. Since I had more photos, I went ahead and I have my three by fours that are going to take up the same footprint of my two horizontal four by sixes so or six by fours so that right there is a super easy switch to accommodate more photos or if you have portrait style photos rather than horizontal now the reason i decided to leave this larger than in the sketch was for the title so the autumn memories workshop scrapbooking workshop kit comes with a sticker sheet with lots of title options and these faux paperboard or paperboard faux wood grain shapes and i kind of like this one here autumn days for my title now if i had cut this you know shorter how the sketch shows like that just for fun here let's just imagine this is cut off and my title goes here I didn't really like how we're going over all of the different paper layers for this title now if I were going to use a sticker title like this with a nice solid background it's bold it stands out it wouldn't matter it would look great with my paper layers like the sketch shows but this one here is going to stand out much better on this lighter wood grain background here. So that's kind of what when I was playing around. And normally I share that process with you, but I was crafting last night on Zoom with uh, Jema and Chelsea. We had kind of a, we were supposed to have a team meeting and it turned into just a crafting chat. So <laughs> this is what I was doing last night uh, while hanging out with them planning. And I think that this is going to work better. And those papers were already cut to that dimension. So it all just kind of uh, fell into place perfectly. Now I wanna show you really quick because I do get a ton of questions about where I have my sketchbooks bound. So if you're a fan of the creative design team and you've been collecting all the sketchbooks, you know there's volume one 12 by 12. This is volume two of 12 by 12. And then we have two volumes of our six by eight sketchbooks that are great for December daily or just six by eight, you know, 
sized scrapbooking. So I've got two volumes of that. And then we do have an eight and a half by 11, which I forgot to grab. So I wanna share some things that I've learned um, and answer your questions about the binding and talk about this new one that I just uh, got and I'm loving it. So I have these bound at Staples. This was my very first one. I was super excited and I made some mistakes. This particular coil, it's terrible. Uh, for one, it's plastic and it doesn't allow you to flip the pages all the way around. It's It stops you. So you can't fold it over and it takes up more space on your desk. That was kind of a bummer. Another thing I made a mistake on is I didn't print front to back. So the book is much thicker than it needs to be because they're all individual pages. Now this is super thick cardstock and I didn't, that this is an upgraded option. Uh, which is way more expensive, but I lucked out because Staples called me and they said, hey, we're out of the paper you ordered. Um, we'll upgrade you to this other cardstock at no additional charge. So I'm like, hey, yeah, sounds good to me. So uh, the coil option here is much nicer because you can, you know, flip that all the way around and just have it open on your desk like that. But these are still, these are also from Staples. I love it. It's a beautiful, you know, quality. This is just a regular paper. It's still super nice and thick. I've printed these double-sided here. So it's a lot more, you know, taking up less space on the shelf. It has this clear cover and then you can get this thick black plastic backing to it so it's really nice but this does cost about 20 to 25 dollars to have it bound which costs more than the sketchbook itself so julie just turned me on to these she's in canada so she got hers at the dollar rama and then jama found this on amazon and it's great so it's just a presentation book and i'm going to slip the label in here that says you know, CDT volume to sketchbook. I just need to do that. And it's just these sleeves. You've got a pocket. This was like $5, I want to say, and I'll leave it listed below. But I printed them at home myself and just slid these in here. So it is a much more economical means of organizing your sketchbooks. Or if you're in our 31 days of Christmas card event and you want to print out all of those guides, this is a great option. And I have only used for one volume, half of it. I'm right in the center. So I'm thinking I can put two volumes of our sketchbooks in here, which again, all about saving space in the craft room, right? So enough of that. So let's get back to our layout. Now I am thinking about bringing in some green. There's tons of green in the pumpkin patch uh, behind us here, harvesting these pumpkins. So I have, I've used up a fair bit of this paper. Um, the green here, I could potentially bring this in by just matting some of the focal photos. I do think that's nice. I like that. And then we can bring a little bit over here. I was thinking about matting all four of these together, but I don't know if I'll have enough to then mat that photo over there. I don't think I would. Um, Plus, I kind of like them better on the wood grain. The opposite side is this lovely color. It's Cajun Craze with a little distressing on there. Uh, that's fun to bring the orange in. So I could maybe do something with that, but I think I like the green. So we'll bring in pops of that. And, um, you know, I am kind of doing my own thing. The Autumn Memories uh, Scrapbooking Workshop has three pre-designed double page layouts. So I am, you know, using bits and pieces from this to kind of switch it up. I created this one here last week on my channel and made some changes, but um, this, the, you know, these didn't quite work for my photos. That's why I picked a different sketch to go with. I'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, early espresso ink to ink up my edges here of my different layers. And what I'm gonna do also is cut out this behind here. So I think I'm gonna, you know, just so I can use this portion that's hidden, but I wanna make sure I get everything placed perfectly before I start cutting into it. So 
I moving that because sometimes this little, you know, the foams deteriorate after a bit and they can shed little inky foam bits on your paper and that's never a good thing, right? These photos were taken October 14th of 2023 and I love everything about the fall season and nothing is more festive than pumpkins, right? So I enjoy decorating with them and they're expensive. So we decided to start growing our own pumpkins in the garden and my mom came up to help us with the harvest and she of course got to pick out some pumpkins to take home for her own front porch. While I have my ink out, I think I'm going to darken this. So these paperboard shapes, you could easily change the color with ink. And I think it needs more contrast. So what we're gonna do is just bring in a wipeable surface here and take your sponge dauber tool, same one we went around the edges with, and just kind of pounce on this and you can get it as dark or you know keep adding more ink if you want it to be darker. So I love these little paperboard shapes for this very reason. They're very you know customizable to match your layout. So we are gonna lose a little bit of that faux wood grain look, but that's okay. I think this will really pop off the background more with the darker colors. I've got this journaling piece from the bonus die cuts from this collection and I was thinking we could do something here and maybe anchor it with a little, it'll be hanging from a cluster. But what if we scoot these over? So this is why I dry fit everything. Have those hanging off so this has a little bit more room here. I think that that is going to work better rather than this because it kind of gets you know, it doesn't stand out as much on that layer, so we will do it this way and have those hanging over. So now that I know where this is going to sit, I can gut out the portion behind here. So we have about a half inch on the top and bottom, and I'm gonna say that is an inch, we're gonna give ourselves an inch and a half just to be sure. It's amazing how far you can stretch your paper when you do little things like this and remove the sections that are hidden. For example, those two gray wood grain papers were, you know, removed from the center of the first layout and they're pretty much the biggest piece of paper on this particular layout. So I basically got a whole nother layout out of those two by taking the time to remove them. Let me get everything situated back into place here. There are some super cute options on the sticker sheet and the paperboard shapes for embellishing. We've got little tree stumps and arrows, mushrooms, little sign leaves, and very cute stickers. But I still may bring some of these in, but I want to play up the whole pumpkin theme. So I went through my stamp collection in my fall category and pulled some that were, I think, good contenders. So these are all retired, but I'm going to show them to you in case you have them in your stash or maybe you have something similar. So I grabbed Cozy Up Card Making because we've got three great pumpkins on here. And I used this one a ton last year, so I might switch it up and revisit this one, which is a bit older. It's called A World With Octobers. And we've got a lot of pumpkins on here, and these are very realistic looking pumpkins as to where these are just a bit more, you know, cutesy. And then this one here I just grabbed because it's got fall, fun fall uh, sayings on here that would work for titles or subtitles. This is called Pumpkin Spice Scrapbooking. Got a little sweater in there already stamped. And something I often do is when I'm working, I will stamp out a whole bunch. And then if they're extra, I tuck them in here. So I've got some ready to go, but it looks like I only have the one size. So I would need to stamp some of the others to build my embellishment clusters. And I knew there was some in here, got a whole bunch in here. Like I said, I, I used this a ton last year and I made a bunch of cards. So I have different sizes and different colors. And some of these, whoops, some of these are just die cut, but not stamped. So I would have to stamp those. But let's just see what these look like for fun. So I always like to kind of mix the sizes and colors, but look how cute that is already. So we could maybe just kind of build something up here. Looks like these are all die cut, so we can kind of get an idea without them being stamped of what those might look like. So I like to do things in odd numbers. So I'm trying to like bring in three of them. I'd want to switch up the colors there. 
And these are just stamped on colored cardstock. You can do white and then color them with your markers. But I do like those. But since I, let's go ahead and stamp some of these. And like I said, I think they're more like realistic looking. And I think that they will be really pretty on this layout. So we'll save these for another project and let's create some of these. I am going to stamp these out on white cardstock so I can color them in with my markers. I'm using intense black ink from close to my heart which is no longer available. Stampin' Up! does have an alcohol marker friendly ink and I will leave that listed in the description box below. So I'm just uh, stamping out several of these. I really don't know you know, what combination of pumpkins I'm going to end up using. So I'm giving myself plenty to work with. And we already have the largest pumpkin. We have several of those stamps. So I'm just focusing on these uh, smaller images here. I do recommend that you give this a little bit of time to dry, but these were stamped, you know, a couple years ago, so they're good to go. I have selected a color palette. These are the Stampin' Up! Stampin' Blends. They come as a pair, so you have a light and a dark, so you can get that shading effect. And I chose Cajun Craze, which is this one, because that's a coordinating color and also looks great with the pumpkins. And then I have Light and Dark Pumpkin Pie. And then I chose Old Olive, which is also a coordinating color in this kit. And if you look at the pumpkins, we even have a grayish green one here, but I don't think that'll stand out against the background. So I skipped that color. But we've got dark green pumpkins, light green, or light green, dark green pumpkins, like a deep orange color, and then light orange color. So that's what, what I was thinking with these. And then I grabbed the uh, pecan pie for the stems. So I just got one because there's, you know, on a small image like that, you can't really do a lot of shading. So let me just show you. I'm going to color one and show you how I do it and then I'll do the rest off camera. I am going to start with the lightest shade of this pumpkin pie and I'm using the brush tip. This I really like because you can color very quickly. I've obviously sped this up but the brush tip covers a large surface area and I don't want to spend a lot of time coloring so this kind of makes me happy. Now I'm switching to the darker version of the marker and I'm using the bullet tip on the opposite side and I'm adding shading to the crease of each of the pumpkin folds where you would naturally have a shadow and I'm using flick like motions so I'm not making like a direct straight line. They're just kind of little, you know, flicks in so it's a little bit irregular. And now I'm going to go back to my light marker and use that brush tip again and then go over the transition areas. Now I want to leave a little bit of a highlight on the round outer part of the pumpkin so that's where the light would be shining and it would naturally be lighter and it just brings these images to life. You can always move back to the darker shade and add even more shadowing. Just play around with them. It really just takes some practice, but it's not hard. And like I said, I really do appreciate that brush tip. It's very nice. And then you have the bullet tip for little areas like this tiny little stem here. I think that looks pretty good. Through the magic of film editing, I went ahead and cut that out. These do have coordinating dies, but sometimes I want a smaller white border. So I went ahead and fussy cut that. But don't those little highlights and light and dark areas look really cool? So I'm going to go ahead and color up the rest with my color palette here. And I'll be right back. And just like that, I have a whole bunch of beautiful fall pumpkin themed ephemera to embellish my layout with. Now I stuck to three colors and I switched it up. So I made sure to color a variety of pumpkins in the green. I didn't want all of the green to be one specific type of pumpkin. So I just kind of mixed it up. And I even, uh, after this pumpkin here with the little warties on it, I tried to mimic that and draw little dots with the green marker. And I think it turned out pretty fun. I like it. So I doubt I'll use all of these, but now I have some ready for some cards or the next layout. So I am also going to be bringing in some of those wood shapes. I popped a bunch of them out and put them in this little tray here. But these are the large largest element. So I want to kind of start with these. Now, if you look at the sketch, let me bring that in here and let me get the glare off the 
sheet there, they have suggested places for your clusters. There's one up here and then one down by the title and then one up here. That visual triangle always works so well. And there's just hexagons kind of showing you where to place those. So I have switched up my sketch a little bit so I don't have as much room in this upper left hand corner because I bumped things over a bit. But I do have a lot of room here. So I think that I'm going to take advantage of that and just um, add some of these pumpkins here. So I wanna be sure to use each of the colors. They don't all have to be you know, exactly matchy matchy, but I do wanna carry those colors throughout. And I mentioned, you know, I want this kind of hanging from something. So we can put some pumpkins up here and let's see here i'm trying to get different pumpkins so i use that one in the cajun craze so now we'll do the one that's kind of turned on its side here and then maybe this smaller green one here and i'm going to overlap them kind of get everything nestled in there and then let's see i think i kind of want something down here so that's going to kind of draw your eye across so let's see we've got Maybe we'll use this little warty guy. I want to use him. And then these are just so pretty. I love the reddish brown color here. So let's start with that. And then we might add some more, but I want to bring in those wood shapes and try some of those out. Let me scoot this up just a bit so you can kind of see these pieces. And I love this sign. I definitely want to use that. And now we need to have a little wood element in each of the other clusters. So I'm gonna pull out several of the leaves and then there's even these little curly Q things. And they just reminded me of like a pumpkin vine, right? How perfect is that? So I'm gonna add those to the tops of some of the pumpkins here. And then I also really like these leaves. There's different types of leaves, like little sprigs and oak leaves and maple leaves. And I'm adding them to each of the clusters again, just to make sure that I have some of that wooden element in each of those little decorative spots. Maybe we'll use that little tree trunk. And I do like the arrow. Maybe we can kind of put that there. And let me scoot these out of the way so we can bring in our mat. Now I'm gonna add some color to these with my marker and I'm using the negative portion of that uh, paperboard shape to test the colors. So I'm coloring up some of the leaves because the lighter wood grain just wasn't standing out a bit. So I thought maybe we can use green for this little squiggle here. And then I'll stick with my same color palette and use the old olive for these leaves. And then maybe we can color some of them with Cajun craze and then maybe even bring in the espresso and just kind of mix it up and vary the colors on these leaves. So this is the lightest of the Cajun craze and I'm being very careful. Just you don't need to press hard with these markers when you touch it down to the surface and almost just wicks the color across. It's super nice. Let's use the darker to add some veining to this leaf and kind of make that stand out a bit more. And here comes King David. He just has to pop in and say hello. I really wanted to use this stamp looking gorgeous uh, from the pumpkin spice scrapbooking uh, stamp. And if you're ever not sure, just stamp it on cardstock that's the same color as your background. And in this case, oh, Dave, here comes Dave again. Bad kitty bad kitty okay we've diverted him he's going that way this is mink uh, from close to my heart and it blends with this color beautifully so that allows you to try it now if you want to stamp it on the background you know okay I'm happy with that I'm not going to regret it or you can just die cut it like that and you know put it on the layout so I did want this over with my mom I mean she's here too but I really kind of wanted this here with her because I just think you know but I, I don't know, maybe over here. But I do like the balance of the text going across the layout. But then I was looking for <laughs> through my fall stamps and pulled this one out more than autumn. And this is so cute because it has some standalone dies that you can mix and match for the different seasons. So I did die cut these and they say, Dave, bad, bad Dave. They say pumpkin season and you can mix and match and say cocoa season. Look, I'm like trying to ward him off here with this stamp. 
go on, it's working. <laughs> okay, so pumpkin season, apple season, there's cocoa, you can mix and match all the different things. And what I love about it is this stamp, it's more than autumn because you can use it for Christmas too. And I did share this in my catalog walkthrough video last month, a couple different cards just showing how well it works for the two different seasons just by switching it up. So there's that die cut word cocoa that you can mix with the pumpkin, you know, um, cocoa season rather than pumpkin. So it's just so cute. Again, me and my coffee stamps. So maybe this could go up here. Too many choices, right? So many different things that would work well. That's just very cute and kind of perfect. I feel like I need to use that. And doesn't that look nice balancing this one here? Um, we could kind of tuck this in here so it's not quite so obvious. Framing in my mom there. I think I like that. That looks good. And then I grabbed this one. Love this moment. And I think these are going to fit on this little sign here. So there's a ton of different little random words that you can put on just about any scrapbook page. So memories, the story, highlights, details, notes, you and me, I love this. So many different things. So let's just pick one or two and stamp them on our little uh, cute little sign here. I'm thinking I want to go because I'm going to have my journaling. So maybe this story would be good. And here it is. So we'll use that one. That'll fit nicely on the upper piece. So we'll do that. And I'm going to use early, oops, early espresso ink there. Let's pull this off my layout just to be safe. And almost drop that. So we'll ink that up, stamp it on our sign. Uh, how perfect is that? And then let's use highlights. So it'll kind of go together, the story highlights. And we'll put that one on the lower portion of our sign. Isn't that fun? I like it. And I did darken up the edges of the sign just to make that stand out a bit more. So we'll put that little guy there. Off camera, I went ahead and added my journaling and then several of these dots. They're in beautiful fall colors. They are called faux glass dots. And you can see there's four different beautiful autumn colors. And I've used the darker kind of ambery orange and then this light orange to add those to my different clusters. So I just mixed and matched and there's two different sizes. You have a larger and a smaller dot. So I added those and then I'm, I was thinking I was done, but then I went ahead and punched this little file tab here. This is a giant punch from my stash. This is very old. Um, I don't think it's available anymore, but Stampin' Up! does have one very similar and it's not that bulky so that's uh, always a plus but these are so fun you could just about use them on anything and it just looks so cute we could put it up top or we could even kind of put it on the side here i did end up matting this in old olive cardstock i didn't want to use let me grab it this paper that i was considering i'm going to save this for another project so since just very little of it was showing i just went with the cardstock I think I like that up top better. And let's find a sticker to maybe put over the top of that. I like this sticker, can't get enough of this. It's too big for up. Well, you can always kind of overlap them so they're just layered. But I was thinking maybe right here. I think that looks neat kind of right in the center of those. So I get that centered. Ugh, they stick to your photos really, really well. They're hard to get up once they touch that glossy photo surface there. That looks good. And then maybe one of these little stickers, maybe the brown one here would look good. Let's try that one right up here. That looks pretty cute. We'll go with that one. I did go ahead and add some foam tape to this top little pumpkin here. Everything else is adhered directly to the layout, but you can see the wood grain through the coloring there. So I like how that looks. Isn't the coloring on the pumpkin so cool? And if you don't have a pumpkin stamp in your stash, consider substituting some fall leaves or, you know, really anything. You can always switch up a layout design and use pink papers and put some hearts there or something like that, but definitely choose something that uh, tells a story behind your photos. Aren't those little curly cues the perfect little pumpkin vine? I love how that worked out there. And I did pop this one up 
as well, just the top one. And yeah, there's our little pumpkin season die cuts there. And if you enjoyed this layout, I would love it if you'd stop and hit that thumbs up button. It does help me out here on YouTube. And everything I've used to create this that is still available will be listed in the description box below. I will be sharing still shots over on my Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest accounts. So you can definitely check those out there if you want to scrap lift this for your own albums. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you next time here on YouTube.